Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. Before we get started, let me get the shout outs out of the way. Today's shout outs goes to Victor's Good Channel and Steph Stefan Freeralt. Both of them were first to say first in one of my recent videos and thus win the shout out. So, congratulations to both of you. So, what do I got here today? This is the Hubson H122D X4 Storm. Looking at this little thing, it's the way it's designed, <laughs> it's meant to be a beginner's intro to FPV racers. And I think actually it is a good way to do such. Okay, what we got here is a little micro FPV racer. It is a 5.8 gigahertz FPV camera in here. Um, the transmitter for that, I believe, you know, most transmitters are 25 milliwatts. This might be 25 milliwatts, but what makes me doubt that it might be even more powerful is that it has heat sink on the transmitter. So it might be a little more powerful than 25 milliwatt. I don't know. Uh, but what's special about this quadcopter? It's meant, again, meant to be a beginner's intro to FPV racers. Um, with that in mind, it can only be flown in acro mode. Um, you know, or, or not acro, I'm sorry, folks, in angle mode. And uh, what that means is this is self-stabilized, okay? So if you let go of the sticks, it will level itself off, okay? So when, And that, as such, this is meant to be, again, a beginner's intro to FPV racing. It makes it FPV flying a lot more easier than flying strictly acro. That's something for, more for intermediate pilots to be doing. Um, looking at this quadcopter, it is built very tough. It is carbon fiber, okay? It's meant to take crashes. The motors are prote well protected inside here. The only thing that, re that really is vulnerable that I can see on this for in crashes would be these props, okay? Everything else is buried inside here. Um, should be protected for hard crashes, so that's good. You know, this, again, intended for beginners learning to fly so that they can have crashes. Um, it should be able to take them. Uh, let's go over the parts on this thing. Again, it's a uh, 5.8 gigahertz FPV uh, transmission system. Uh, here's your little monopole antenna here. It tilts forward and backward. Uh, the motors are 10 millimeter motors, 10, probably 1020s. But what's cool about these are, is, you know, these are brushed. A lot of people say, oh, I gotta have a brushless. No, you don't, okay? Especially if you're a beginner. Brushed are just fine. Uh, the th cool thing about these, though, is they're easy to replace. The main being, reason being is they are plug-in. Each one of these are plug-in motors. So if one does fail, all you got to do is go purchase another one. They're about 3 to $4 and plug it in. And away you go again. So um, this has been planned for motor failure is what I'm trying to say. Uh, other things about it, um, the camera is swivelable. It, you can mo move it up or down. And you really probably would want to move it slightly upward. I'm going to do that right now so that you can gain high speed. You can, when you're flying forward like this, you know, for a high speed uh, flight, you want to be able to pitch that camera up to uh, uh, be able to still see the horizon while you're flying like that. You know, if you uh, have the camera level, you know, for those uh, uh, micro FPV racers with level cameras, you do this, you're just looking at ground. You really can't steer. So that's a cool idea in itself does have LEDs on the back for binding status and battery status. One of them starts blinking when you're binding. And also, they start blinking when you're recording, too. On the bottom of this has a beeper, okay, lost signal beeper. So if you crash out in the field somewhere or out in the grass somewhere, you'll be able to find it with this beeper. All you need to do is turn off your transmitter, and this thing will start beeping uh, once it loses signal from the transmitter. What's really cool, you know, with this camera is this camera is 720 produced 720p HD video, and it is recordable on this little DVR here. I got a little micro SD card slot or micro SD card in there, in that slot. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, that allows you to record in-flight video. You don't need a DVR built into your goggles, although I will be flying with one <laughs> today. We'll compare the video between the two, and uh, finally, the battery on this thing is a uh, 7.4 volt uh, LIHV battery. It's not your typical LiPo battery, it's LIHV. Let's take this out because I want to discuss this for a bit. Um, the battery voltage on it is 7.6 volt uh, nominal voltage. Uh, high peak voltage will be should be about 8.6 volts. Now, that is what I want to discuss. <laughs> 
this is the charger that you get for charging this LIHV battery and the charge that you do get let's see if I can show that to you um, using my cheap uh, battery tester here is plugging it in we see 8.63 4.32 volts 8.63 volts and 4.31 volts so they're not balanced okay 4.31 4.32 for 8.63 a little bit over voltage from this uh, charger so you know charging this I you know with repeated use it might damage this battery I'm kind of worried about that so if you uh, don't already have an LIHV capable charger and you know you can use this but uh, if it does burn out keep in mind you can use other batteries besides the one that I got right here and in fact today I am going to be flying with this little battery we're going to start off with this battery this is just a plain old lipo uh, 520 milliamp hour 2s battery that charges through uh, balance port and it can also be used through the balance port to power this quadcopter I forgot to mention that the power plug on this quadcopter is a balance plug uh, receptacle so you ha have to use a 7.4 volt battery with a balance plug to power it and that's what I am going to do today again we're going to start off in line of sight flying using this cheap generic battery 2s battery and then we'll switch to the stock battery for um, FPV flying so let's go for a flight of this oh before we do I always forget <laughs> important the transmitter this is the transmitter you get with it um, the this particular transmitter is similar to transmitters for the H216 and the H570. I forgot the letters, but it is in addition to being 2.4 gigahertz uh, analog transmitter, it also has Bluetooth capability. Now I'm not sure what the Bluetooth is for. Uh, it's not for controlling the drone. It might be for controlling. Um, your, taking input from the monitor screen. Now keeping in mind that this particular model that I'm flying here is the ready to fly version without the monitor screen. Um, but it might have something to do with that. I'm not sure. Um, it says it's supposed to be able to bind a fat shark goggle, fat shark goggles also. So I don't know what that means in regards to this transmitter. But let's go over the controls of it real quick. Um, this button here is your on off switch. You hold it down for three seconds to bring the power on to the transmitter and it will automatically bind to the quadcopter um, if it doesn't you can do a manual rebind by holding down the photo button here while simultaneously turning on the transmitter with the quadcopter energized and that should bind it up um, you can turn the lights on and off by pressing this button here this is for bringing this screen menus for the monitor version that comes with a monitor and goggles um, by pressing that button there on the top left we have a photo button for starting and stop or taking photos and video button for starting and stopping video and these buttons here are for left right trim so if it's drifting to the left you move it you can trim it to the right but a better way to do that is to put the quadcopter on a flat level surface and here's how you do a gyro cal move this stick to the left and then move the stick right and left until the quadcopter's lights blink and that will uh, uh, balance the quadcopter's gyros you can do flips by pressing into this pitch roll or this throttle yaw stick and you can do uh, adjust the rates to beginner and expert by pressing into the pitch roll stick and to arm the motors and disarm the motors you bring both sticks down and out like so so that's it okay again let's start off we're going to start off flying this thing uh, line of sight with the generic battery until the battery goes dead because there's one other thing I wanted to test and that is this thing's supposed to it says it returns to home and lands I think it's just going to land on low battery we're gonna find that out here shortly here so I am charging up or plugging in the battery a little generic battery into its battery bay and then closing up the velcro strap putting it on a flat level surface turning on the transmitter transmitter is on and we could tell we are uh, bound because we got a blue linkage light although again I'm not sure if that's for Bluetooth or not okay let's start up the motors and take to the air 
And bring it up close. This is it, up close. See the both little red lights in the back are solid. Let's punch it. <laughs> Not a huge amount of punch with that little generic battery. But let's see, wow, even this is beginner rate, folks. This thing screams in beginner rate. If this is beginner rate, I'd be kind of afraid to try it. Let's try expert rate. Let's bring it in close. And I'm going to go a little bit further out into the field here. Okay, pressing the right stick to go into expert. Okay, the yaw rate increases. Pitch rate seems to be similar. Although, no, you can get a lot more pitch. A lot more pitch in expert rate. And a lot more faster yaw turn. So where this might come in handy is it flying, uh, wow, <laughs> flying FPV. But again, all you got to do is let go of the stick and it uh, rebalances itself. Going back to beginner. I'm going to save that expert rate for uh, FPV flying, seeing how, how well that works. But again, let's bring it up close. Let's yaw it around a bit so you can see it. And then pushing forward. Now this thing's supposed to have 100 meter range. Will it? I'm not going to fly at 100 meters. No. <laughs> That's a little too far. But I'm going to bring it in close so you can keep seeing it while I'm flying it. Now keep in mind, again, I'm using a cheap, cheap generic battery. 7.4 volt battery. It's designed, I don't know, I think it was designed for the F959 or something like that. Uh, airplane. <laughs> it's an airplane battery. But it works as well in this particular quadcopter. Screaming Mimi. Okay, I'm getting beeps. That's what you get. You get a beeper warning. So it has telemetry. Let's see if the lights are flashing. You get telemetry warning on low battery. And also the back lights are flashing red. Can you see that, folks? This, and that is also beeping. I did not know that it had telemetry, but now we know. And let's see, will it land itself? Okay, I, more and more throttles needed to keep it in the air. Well, I'm just going to land it right here because, yeah. Is it going to land itself? I'm kind of worried about that cheap battery. I don't want to burn it out. I like that battery because <laughs> I use it in my F959. So we're going to call it quits here with the battery warning. I'm going to assume that that is its battery protection, that you get a low battery warning. And I'm not going to fly it till it drops. So, let's measure the voltage. And this thing's beeping also. Hear it? Let's measure the residual voltage on the battery to see, and let's also turn this off to save battery power on this. And getting my battery meter. By the way, these things are like dirt cheap, just a dollar, two dollars. If you don't have one of these portable battery meters, I recommend you getting one. They come in handy. But let's plug it in, see what we got left. Two cells, 7.55 volts, 3.77 on one, 3.78 on the other. So we still had quite a bit of battery power left with this cheap generic battery. <laughs> when that battery went off. So we could flew it a little bit more, but again, it's good that it uh, saves that battery. And that battery's not too warm. I thought there'd be a lot more uh, power drain from it, but it's not warm at all. You know, just slightly warm. Okay, what we're going to do next is let's plug in this LiPo and go for FPV flying. So, hope you enjoy the second part of this flight. Okay, let's go for FPV flying of this. Again, this comes with, there's another version that comes with uh, its own goggles, but I prefer to use my VRD too. I just feel comfortable using these. So I got the cheaper version without the goggles. So uh, let's start the recording. Camera is recording. And uh, let's take, no, the camera's not recording. Let's try that again. Hold it down. Maybe I got to hold that down. There, camera is recording now. Let me adjust the screen on my goggles a bit too. And let's start up the motors and take to the air. Motors are started. 
there is some latency, some lag. But let's try it around here. Yeah, let's bring it flying by us. Takes a little bit of getting used to. I forgot to mention though, um, this is also can be bound to the T8SG. Can I go around that pole? I'm curious. Do we have range to go around the pole? I guess we do. Still going through the trees. Some latency there, <laughs> but, but I could do it. So yeah, this is really meant for beginners to learn to fly uh, FPV. Uh, they're gonna be flying like this. Uh, slow and gentle like this and for that this is actually perfect you know um, but for high-speed racing I, this is not a racer <laughs> I can tell you right now although I can try to get some speed on it let's see <coughs> oh, excuse me you're excused my love let's, let's go higher pitch going around through here All right, it can move it sure can, whoa, it's getting a little bit fuzzy. Going around this way. Okay, let's go up higher. I haven't done something yet. This thing can, is it the right one? Oh, it's the left one. Two flips. <laughs> Coming back down. Forward flip. Let's do a flip in front of us. Bringing it back down. By the way, you can go high with this thing too, as you saw there. So if you want to use it as a camera bird, yeah. My wife's got a cold. Sorry about that, folks. Oh, there, see? Did a, a tumble by us. Tumble the other way. Well, let's go back up high again and show you that. Yeah, you could use this as a camera bird. <laughs> so. I better come back down, I'm way high. Reduce the death throttle to come back down. Pretty neat. Again, beginners learn to fly. I haven't gone to high rate. I'm in high rate now. The yaw rate goes up, so I can turn a little bit faster. I'm in high rate. Whoa, don't want to go in that puddle. <laughs> go back to beginner rate. That high rate is a little bit extreme. Going around the pole. Getting fuzzy right now. Now, the reason I'm using my VRD2 goggles is, you can see right now I'm getting fuzzy reception here. If you use the stock goggles that this comes with, I hear you get blue screen. And blue screen's bad. You want to get sunscreen. Uh, not sunscreen, some screen, so that you can still see a picture when you're get, going out of range of the transmitter. You know, the fuzziness is good, in other words. I, I can still see something through that fuzziness. Uh, blue screen, on the other hand, can create issues. You go blue screen, you're blind, so you really can't fly it. So that's why I prefer to use the VR D2 goggles instead of the stock goggles that comes with this. Whoa, I nipped Ooh. those trees there. Okay, coming down low, trying to stay lower this time. Where are we at? We're around here somewhere. We're over there. On the right. <laughs> I see it. Going back and forth by us. Coming back again. Going by us again. Turning around. Now, um, you know, my flight is kind of unsteady here. It's because we're, again, we're flying in angle mode, and, and again, there's a little bit of latency. Let's see if I can do it accurate enough to go between the trees. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to slow it down now to, to the speed, say, a beginner would be flying FPV. Uh, uh, I'm, uh. Wait, I'll get it. I'm taking off again. What happened? Oh, low battery. Let me stop it, and my wife's going to get it. Okay, the backlights are flashing. 
um, but there's no beeping so I'm not sure if it's low battery or what but we're gonna try to take it off again I'm gonna put it here on my by my feet this time. Uh -huh. actually right here with a motor start oh what motors not running Hold on. that's not good Uh, this motor is full of dirt. Hold on, hot, folks. Okay, I cleared it up. I think I cleared up the dirt. It's spinning freely now, but somehow dirt got in there. I'm not sure how, but it did. <laughs> so let's see if I can take off from here. Let's try and start the motors again. Down and out. Okay. Let's see if I can take off. There we go. So yeah, I got some grit in those motors. I'm not sure how that happened, but I did. Some sand, because I landed in sand there. But again, I'm, I still have power here. I'm still recording. Let's go up high again over those trees. I don't want to land in those trees. <laughs> and we'll finish out the battery up high. Okay, I need to do a Bringing it down. I need to give it some left pitch here. I think I need to uh, do a compass caliber, or not compass, a gyro calibration here, because I got a little bit of a drift. See, that's that's it drifting normally. But pushing forward again. You know, other people had short flight times when this first came out, and. Uh, I think the reason was is most this came out in like uh, the winter time in January when this first was released and I just got a hold of this now but um, those early reviewers were flying in winter time <laughs> when it was really cold and so their flight times were a lot less what than what I am getting I'm getting pretty darn good flight time I'm su getting surprisingly good flight time from this battery but it's summertime so maybe that's why. Let's go fast again. Okay, there goes our beep. Beep warning, so let me see if I can land this on the pad. Probably not. I got my camera angle set up real high. Let's see, let's see how let's see if I can get a little closer. Oh no, it's landing itself. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um they say when this battery when the battery gets weak it's gonna do a return to home and landing. It does not. It does a landing. <laughs> it lands itself, which is cool. So let's unplug this thing, give my final thoughts on it. Um, all in all, this is actually an excellent beginner's racer. Hear that beeping in the back? That's the transmitter. But um, and I got some dirt on the lens too from that unscheduled stop there <laughs> but but yeah this is great for beginners to learn to fly FPV um, as a racer though no it's got a, the lag is just a little bit too much but you will see FPV from my goggles so and that's the main reason I wanted to fly today was with the goggles to see how it can fly with FPV so I hope you enjoyed this flight this quadcopter 101 signing up mm -hmm.